Hi there. In this video tutorial, I would like to show you how to plot the combinations of uh, two stocks in a portfolio using Excel. Let's begin with the data we need. Obviously, we need data on two stocks to produce our plot. Uh, for this tutorial, I've chosen Tesla and Netflix, but of course you can choose any, any pair that you like. And I'm gonna be working with monthly returns and I'm gonna use uh, five years uh, data. So that means I've got 60 return observations in total. Again, you could use daily returns or a different sample period. The logic doesn't change really. And I have downloaded this data from uh, Yahoo Finance. Uh, first you get the prices and then compute the returns. We've got a separate tutorial on that if you would like to see that. And if you go to the video description, We've got a link to this uh, spreadsheet as well, if you would like to download it. Right, so let's begin uh, our um, tutorial by first computing the return and risk of each of these stocks. So I'm gonna have Tesla over here, and Netflix over here. Of course, here we are talking about realized uh, returns. And I'm going to compute the average realized or average historical return by simply selecting all this data over here. Okay. So for the period I've chosen, the average return of uh, monthly return of Tesla was 6.78%. Uh, and I'm gonna just fix uh, the rows here. So I'm gonna extend this uh, downwards as well. So I will pull this down, but this is of course still the same. So I'd like to move it over here. And here we are. So for Tesla, the return over the same period was 0.94%. The next thing to do is to compute the risk of each of these stocks. And for that, I'm going to uh, compute standard deviation of returns as our measure of risk. So what I can do, I can actually, um, maybe it's better to be honest to fix the, um, so I would like to keep Tesla the same. So I'm going to fix the columns here rather than the rows. And I'm using F4 to do that. Or you can also use um, Shift4 for the dollar sign. Okay, so let me just move it over here. Make sure still Tesla is selected. And I don't want now the average return, but I would like the standard deviation of returns as the measure of risk. So I'm gonna use sdev.s. You could also use sdev.p, it'd be very similar. Because this is a sample of returns, I'm going to uh, stick to this um, sample standard deviation. Sorry. Here we are. So for Tesla, the average return was 6.78% with a volatility of 22%. So if I just pull Netflix over here and change this to sddev.s. I get uh, the volatility of Netflix return as 12.27%. Now I can already start calculating the portfolio return. For risk, we need one more measure. Let's maybe begin with the portfolio return and then we can um, come back to portfolio risk. So what we need is investment weights. So this is all about how you split the money or your funds across two stocks. And I'm going to work, I'm going to start from zero and we'll use 10% uh, increments, okay? Or 0.1 increments all the way up to one. So here you can think of it as putting nothing in Tesla and all of your money in Netflix. And at the other extreme, this is putting all your money in Netflix and nothing in Tesla. Here you have an equally weighted portfolio, so 50-50, and so on. 
So portfolio return is simply a weighted average of the returns. So the weights are these investment weights. So I'm going to start with the weight of Tesla. So multiplied by the return of Tesla. So I'm using uh, F4 uh, to uh, fix this cell. Somehow it's not working, so I'm, I'm not going to be able to use the shortcut. So I'm using just Shift 4 to fix it. These are normal, it should work. So weight of Tesla times the return of Tesla plus one minus the weight, which is the weight of Netflix, of course, times the return on Netflix. And again, we need to fix this. But we are going to expand this downwards so that we don't mess up. So as you can see, this is exactly the same as this because all the money is in Netflix. This is Tesla weight. Maybe let's be more specific. Tesla weight. Okay. Whereas here, all the money is in Tesla. So the return is exactly the same as Tesla. So this is my portfolio return for different combinations. Okay. So for portfolio risk, like I said, we need one more thing. Uh, because in a portfolio, it's not just the individual risks that matter, but also how the two stocks interact with each other matter as well. And the statistical measure we will use to uh, capture that is called correlation. Okay, So we need to compute the correlation between the two stocks. You could also use covariance. Correlation is simply a scaled version of covariance. That's a slightly shorter with the um, correlation, so I'm just going to rely on that. And I'm going to use Excel's Corel function. And all you need to do is to select these two uh, column of returns, really. Okay, so this is the first one for Tesla. And the second array is for Netflix. Let's see what the correlation comes out as. Typically, stock correlations are uh, positive if you randomly to pick two stocks. And not surprisingly, these guys have a positive correlation, which is 0.38, which is good because it's not too high. The figure will look a bit nicer when the correlation is lower. Now I've got everything I need to compute portfolio risk. So all I need to do now is to enter here the portfolio risk formula. So I'm going to first compute variance and then take the square root to get the risk, so standard deviation of returns. So with the variance, essentially, you begin with the first weight times the volatility of Tesla. You need to square this. Okay, This is the first term. Right? And again, let's, forget, let's not forget how to fix the cell, because this will remain the same. Then the second term will, of course, be the investment weight for Netflix, which is 1 minus this weight times the volatility of Netflix returns. Again, this is squared. So this is all good. Just one more term that we need where we will use the correlation. Two times the first weight times the second weight, so which is of course one minus the first weight, times the correlation, again, let's fix that cell. Okay, times the volatility of the first one, the risk of the first stock, times the risk of the second stock. So this is the variance, okay, and if I take square root this that will give me portfolio risk and that turns out to be not surprisingly 12.27 percent because at the moment i'm not investing anything in tesla so all my portfolio is in netflix and again this bottom figure is exactly the same as this because now everything is in tesla so if you look here, there are some interesting portfolios as well. For example, have a look at this portfolio. So if I only invest in Netflix, my return is less than 
over this period, let's say the realized return, and the risk was 12%. If I mix up a little bit with um, Tesla, I get a higher return and lower risk, which is great. Right, so this risk is a lot lower than Tesla and Netflix's risk, and its return is higher as well. Right, so this is a benefit of diversification, of course. The lower the correlation, the more the benefits of diversification. Okay, the last thing I would like to do is, of course, to plot these combinations to get a nice uh, figure and to, to help us with uh, visual interpretation of what we are doing here. So I will simply insert a, a scatter plot here. Okay. Here we are. And we need to select our data. So add some add series here. So we will have risk on the horizontal axis, the x-axis, which is here. And this is risk, portfolio risk. And we will have return on the vertical axis. We are. Hmm. This looks slightly odd. Did I do something wrong here? Let's see whether if I messed up the formulas. Oh yes, here you are. So I forgot to fix something. Right? So we need to correct that. So this I forgot to fix. If I see the difference, looks a lot nicer, isn't it? Okay, we don't need the chart title of this. And I'd like to add some elements. So let's add some nice titles. Got risk over here. And add a vertical title as well. We got return. And we don't really need all this empty space. So we can actually start this around 10%. Okay. We got rid of that empty space there. And we've got a nice lot of the combinations of these two stocks. Now, let's try to understand what this plot is telling us. So if you look at this data point, this is the Tesla stock, okay? So this is if I add a data label here. Oops, I just want to add the text. Tesla. Here we are. And the bottom one, here is Netflix. Okay. Netflix. And all these other points are these combinations, right? So if you look at this one, for example, this is the portfolio. So let's add the label. This is the portfolio where I put 80% of my funds in Tesla and 20% in Netflix. Okay. As well. Eight percent Tesla, twenty percent Netflix. Right. Let me see if I can make this a bit nicer. All right, much nicer. 80% Tesla, 20% Netflix. How about this one? So this would be 0, 10, 20, 30, 40%. So this is 40% Tesla, 40% Tesla, 60% Netflix. Okay. And this one, for example, is the equally weighted portfolio where I split my money exactly in half. So let's say I, I put $100 in Netflix, $100 in Tesla, and so on. And there we are. 
So this is our plot of the combinations of two stocks in a portfolio. I hope you've enjoyed um, watching this video. If that's the case, please give the video a like and uh, see you in another video. Thank you for watching.